still have no idea why it was only six minutes the other day, but now I'm just complaining. Okay, we're, uh, I, I believe we had uh, a problem we were working on with that uh, hinge door. Did, how far did we get with that one? We got the, so we we're ready to figure out what the uh, moment was. We got this door. Held up by a, by a cable, right? Five hundred newtons in the cable, and some of the available dimensions. Door was eight hundred millimeters there. Not sure how long, but. It, wasn't part, wasn't of concern as it turned out. Um, 20 degrees, and this was 750 millimeters by 850. And we had the matrix set up. What were we, what were, matrix for what? What were we trying to find? Ultimately, didn't I ask you to find the moment about the uh, the hinge side? Hinges are here, and I think I call that O and C, A and B. So we wanted to find the moment about that uh, hinge line O C. How are we going to do that? You remember, PJ? I have a question. Now, the point B, uh -huh. might be in the center of the length of the door. Might be. Might not be. Remember, I said we don't know what the length of the door is. It's not important. It's not germane to this. Okay. Uh, the only reason it would be is if we were taking into account the weight of the door as well, because that's also causing forces and moments on the hinges. Um, but that's just not part of the problem. We're just looking at the moment caused by the cable as attached. So again, uh, my, my, I think I said this warning, I'll say it again. Be careful that your uh, drawing doesn't give you answers that aren't there. That it looks like it's halfway. Be careful about saying that it is. Um, plus, I'm not sure where we would end up using that anyway. Well, it's, it's, I only ask because it's attached at one corner of the door to throw a twist. But since we're not yeah. figuring that out, it doesn't we're, matter. We're, yeah, we're not doing all the forces and all the moments on the door. We're doing the moment by this force sure. along that axis. That's all was asked. So, yeah, there could be more to it if you were doing this in real life, but we're not in real life. We're in here. So, uh, what do we need to do to find this moment about this axis when what we've done before is find the moment about a point? Dot what with what? Dot the total moment about a point on that axis, dot it with what? The unit vector. What unit vector? Of the axis. Of the, axis. the unit vector that represents the axis of interest. And that's uh, our symbol for unit vectors. And so we're going to need that, and we're going to need the moment itself. And then we can take the dot product of So we had the matrix set up for this, I believe, but just hadn't done it yet. Or did you do it? Hey, did anybody do that one uh, where I told you to use a completely different vector? Not completely.
completely different, but to a different line of action on the problem before this. There goes those extra credit points. I did a different plan on here. Oh, you, you didn't go to, well, we have to do the vector O, we have to do A vectors. You could do O to A or you could do O to B. Oh, we are doing the two on this one, didn't we? All right, so what did we have written at the board? O to A or O to B? O to A, so that was zero, 0.752, I believe, and uh, 4, 274. Does that look right? And then we have the, the force uh, in some form or the other. I have it on my page as minus 345. I think we might have had the the magnitude pulled out, but if you put it back in, you get this, 193. And that's where we were then on Wednesday, somewhere around there, somewhere to that point. Okay. Anybody do this? Uh, if you did, remember, O to B, you're going to have a different vector in the middle, but the cross product itself should come out to be the very same. So did anybody do this cross product? No? What did you guys do on Thursday? Just movies? Alright, if you do the cross product, then I don't need to step through the cross product steps themselves anymore. I oh, hope Trev Trevor Soros. At two sixty I had plus ninety five J hat plus two sixty K hat. Uh not quite what I had. The second two I had. I had two twenty nine for the first one. So let's let's just check that first one. So we take out that row, that column. So we have seven five two times one ninety three. Minus the other direction, which is a minus 305 times 274. And that's, uh, and then there's the J and the K part, but we agree on those. So yeah, I know those alone. Now you'll have slightly different numbers. Oh, you. I, Got it? Okay. Okay, so I had uh, 229i minus 95j plus 260k.
And so when you dot that with the uh, uh, the the moment vector we got, you end up just taking as you would anyway the the first part of it because the dot product's going to get rid of the other two parts, and so we have minus two twenty nine, which is uh, if the minus sign is going to be troubling with the OC, we have to be careful. So we still uh, we can observe that it's going to be positive. Um, so depends on whether it's crucial that we said OC, the minus meaning we're in the opposite direction of that. The moment is positive, but OC runs the other way. If that's crucial, I'm not sure why it would be, but it might be for a setup of a problem. Anyway, that'll get it. Uh, always get what you can out of observation of the picture. All right. So we've got uh, we've got our last little bit to put together before we can actually start doing our equilibrium uh, analysis. So far, we've just been adding some things up as we need to. The resultant vector, the resultant force is the sum of all the other forces and whatever symbolism we might use. Uh, R again for the resultant or the sum of, the sum of any other moments about O that might be in the problem. Now one thing that's been very, very helpful to us is this notion that force forces are sliding vectors. That's been very useful to us in setting up the moment calculation that then followed. It wasn't necessarily important for this calculus, this summation, but it's very important for calculating the moments. Uh, the, the moment vector itself that we get out of this also has a characteristic to it that can be very helpful. And remember, moments and couples are uh, generally the same. Moments and couples aren't just sliding vectors. They are free vectors as we call them. Here's what that means to us. See, we have just some very simple object, a door or a part to a, a machine or something, and there's some kind of moment that's being caused on that, either by some applied force, or maybe there's something attached to it that itself is twisting and is applying a moment or there's two forces applying a couple, somehow there's some moment being caused on that, that uh, object and for whatever reason we know where it is, maybe there's, there's some kind of big arm here and it's got some force to it that's doing that. That's equivalent to that same moment, same magnitude, same direction, but applied anywhere on that object. We don't, the moment itself does not have a uh, location. The force has a location that determines the magnitude and direction of the moment but the moment itself has no direction, no, no specific location to it. Doesn't mean we wouldn't have to worry about it if we're looking at the connection, uh, whatever this crank arm much, might, might be, but 
Uh, the action of the piece itself is the same for any one of these, either one of these pictures, because the moment is a slight a free vector and applies anywhere on the object. So for a, an example type problem, let's say we have whatever this is, maybe a bracket on a wind turbine or something. Kind of looks spookily like a like a cross, uh, like you see in a cemetery because we're getting close to Halloween, so we're preparing ourselves. That's the first thing you think of when you think of cross. Is this scary cemeteries and Halloween. <laughs> Well, no, it's probably like the third thing, but I can't share with you the first things. <laughs> so, got a couple forces on it. There's one force there, there's one force there, and I'll give you some amounts and some dimensions on these. Oops, I can't even see that force there because I put my, uh, my hole punch through it, so we'll make something up. And then by whatever means, there's an applied moment right here. So maybe there's a, 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 a motor that's attached there that's running in one direction, so it causes a moment. So that's 500 newtons at 60 degrees. This is 300 newtons. I don't know what this other one is because I marked over it. This is 600 newton meters. We'll just make up a value for that one. Nice round numbers. Because we only use, there are only nice round numbers in the world. Every calculation you ever do as an engineer is going to be nice round numbers. Everything's easy. And then some dimensions. The arms are each. 450 millimeters. Don't quite look like it, but remember <coughs> these are cartoon drawings here. Just trying to get an idea of it. And vertically, this is 400 millimeters. And then 300 millimeters to that force. And we want to find the resultant force and the resultant moment uh, because it's that that we're going to have to balance when we put these things into static equilibrium next, starting next to so if we don't know how to sum up the forces, we can't do the next step anyway. So that's why we're working on this. All right, everybody got a reasonable picture? Ready to go? All right. To sum the forces, it's just like it was in physics one. Probably the easiest thing to do is to sum it in the component directions. Uh, to get the result. So, oh, let's number these. Just so we have uh, something to refer to. Okay, three forces. label some, uh, some actual points if we need to as we go. So the result in the x direction will be the sum of the forces in the x direction. And let's see, one doesn't have anything, two has a little bit. Five hundred newtons at what, cosine sixty. 
done right. And then uh, three is all the way in the x direction. And so that's pretty easy. You can do that back in physics one, no trouble. What's that come out to be? Dana's on it. He's a calculated genius, this kid. I mean, he, he typed through that so fast, it's beautiful. It's what? 250 newtons. So he told you all numbers come out to be nice, fat, even numbers in real life. Oh, well, yeah, that was All of them together? Yes. 600. Thank you. 600. Okay, so that's easy stuff. That's that's not bad. And then we know we we know that uh, we're gonna have to oppose that force to get static equilibrium. Uh, most likely, as we design the uh, the mounting for it there, whatever that might be. All right. To get the moment. We need to uh, sum up all the individual ones, but for the calculation of the moment caused by each force, we do need to pick some location as our reference point. Now, when we go to balance the moments, we don't want it to have any moment anywhere in the end. That's what our static equilibrium requirement is. But we're just looking for the result right now. So, what point? Maybe down there just makes the, the makes sense because that's where we're going to have to uh, uh, equilibrate things anyway. So, we can do it with the cross product. But things are pretty rectangular here. We could probably get away without it if we can determine what the moments are, arms are for each of them. For example, remember these are sliding vectors. So there's the moment arm for the first force. No reason to do the cross product if we don't need to. Um, if we pick that as the vector, that's what we end up with anyway. So, is this positive or negative? Well, we, uh, I guess we have said which is the positive x in the y direction, which implies which is the positive z direction. So, <coughs> our usual is uh, if that's x and that's y, then positive moment is that direction. So that will be a negative moment from force one. How big? Two hundred newtons times four hundred and fifty millimeters. Or if we want it in newton meters. Which is a little more typical and keeps these numbers from getting too big. So that's the moment due to force one. About the point O. Does two cause any moment? <coughs> Yeah, of 
course it does. However, only one of the components does. We have the F two X in that direction. We have F two Y in that direction. And F two Y goes right through the uh, point we're talking about, so we're not concerned with it. So we just need the moment arm for F two X, which is. 700 millimeters. Now its moment arm is that. And F2Y goes right through. Plus or minus? Looks to me like F2X is going to tend to make things go that way. We're going to balance that in this class. We don't let things go that way, but that would be the tendency, and that's negative. Um, that would come out automatically if you did the cross product, but uh, we're not. So uh, it's uh, oh, whatever that is, that 500 times uh, the cosine. 60, that was 250. Got that number from somewhere, I just don't remember where. Uh, times 700 millimeters or 0.7 meters. That's the total moment due to two. And I, don't forget, I'm gonna, these are vectors, I'm going to have to put the, uh, the k direction in there, but that's what we're already setting up with the minus signs. And then we have a another moment arm of three, also in the negative direction. Force three is 300 newtons, and that moment arm is 0.4 meters. And then all of that is in the k direction. And the minus signs are uh, in agreement with that, and that's exactly what you should get if you did, uh, did cross products on each one of them. Now, is that all?
Penny, you've been fired? Do you agree, though? No? How hard is it? Do I have to do this in my head? Yes. There's 90 minus, that was 250, that's 340, minus 120, which is 560, 1160. All right? Dan? Yeah? No? <laughs> Trevor Rapper is the only one smart enough to not pull out his calculator and not get in on this. Can't, can't go wrong if you're not doing anything. 10 to 16? You want to look again? I'll believe you. 90, 250s, 340, 120 is 3460. Right, 460. So N600 is 10, 1060. Is that right, Dan? Oh, what'd you get now? Something. 985. All right, here. 985. 985? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> 985. Like, really? It's 250. Okay. What? 250. Oh, I forgot the 0.7. Yeah, I just did the 250 and then forgot the 0.7. But I have an excuse. I was doing it in my head. What's your excuse? All right, 985. <laughs> Minus 985. Now, if we were to draw an equivalent picture, what would we draw? We know the resultant force. It's uh, uh, almost 45 degrees in the, uh, the positive xy direction. We know the moment is negative, so we know it's direct, but how do we draw that equivalent diagram with just the resultant force and just the resultant moment? Where would I put the force? about 45 degrees, not quite, a little under that, no, a little over that. Where would I put it? If I put it anywhere besides through this point, then it's going to cause another moment. So I have to put it right through that point. So there's my resultant at, at whatever angle it is, whatever magnitude it is. A little over 45 degrees. But if I put it anywhere else, it's going to change what the total moment calculation was. Now where do I put the moment? I know what direction it is. It's all negative. I know it's clockwise. Where do I put it? You can put it anywhere. It's a free vector. But things just make a little more sense if you draw it around that point. That just tends to make a better drawing. Plus, if we're trying to put it into static equilibrium, that's what we're going to have to oppose right there with whatever it is we do. Uh, for the attachment here. We're going to have to oppose that force and oppose that moment with whatever it is we're going to do there. Okay? Maybe we're ready for a get out of class question. Oh, I didn't bring my book. Anybody have their book here? This is actually one in the book so you can see the picture. No. I'll go get my own get my, uh, bottle anyway. No, you can use it. Yeah, take a second to go get it. <coughs> then you can uh, 
you can look at it and you don't have to draw it. Right?
components in the pictures, uh, you'll get the same thing. Was there a word for you? So figure out that second force, the 800 Newton force. Hold that magnitude out. Components, 
then the cross product's the way to go because we've already got the force. All we need is a vector to somewhere along that line of action, and that's pretty easy too, so maybe that's a better way to go. Some people can see the moments flawlessly, some can't. So we've got the force. What's 400 times uh, sine 24? Yeah, see, it gets a little confusing, doesn't it, BJ? Yeah. What? 163. Wait, that's, that's the position vector. This is the force vector. 163 minus cosine 400 in the J. 365 and then 0 in the K. And that's uh, Newton's. And then the position vector for that first force seems to me there's two obvious choices. What are they for this first force? Wouldn't it seem either this point, which is very well known, or that point, which is also very well known. First, first one, 200 by 200, couldn't be much easier than that. And that's uh, 200 plus 200 in the x. Zero in the y and minus 200 in the k. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, if we make it Newton meters, because that's what this one's in, that'll be a little easier. So 0 0.2, 0, 0.2. They're both positive. No, this the k one is negative. Is that right? 0 0.20 minus 0.2. Take some practice. We're just doing 2D vectors to start with in physics one. Alright, then the cross product of that. Alright, we got zero. Oh man, a world record of minus for the direction, then a minus minus on each of the components. That's the I component. That look right? Be real careful with those minus signs. Minus, because we're on the J component, and do it in the same direction. That's zero minus the direction, which is another minus. 163 minus 0.2, another minus sign. Uh, oh, that's the J direction. Does that look right? The J component, so we have these four. First one's zero, so we have then minus that one, which is another minus sign. We have a minus sign because it's the middle component anyway. Does that look okay? BJ, all right? Are you perplexed or angry? Or both? Yeah. And the K component, that. times the minus 365 minus the other direction which is a zero. We know kind of what it's going to do because of where it is. It looks like it's going to be 
and the and the minus certainly the the minus y direction. It's going to be in the minus k direction and minus e direction. We should get a minus on the all all of these. So that's going to give us a minus. That's going to give us a minus. Okay. So just kind of observing where they pass the axis should be a minus in each one of the directions. All right. So what's that come out to be? Anybody have it? Do I have it? Three twenty six. I didn't get that. Three two point six. Okay. Or thirty three. I called it minus seventy three i minus thirty three j and minus seventy three k. Is that right? Give or take a dime or two. Okay. All right. That was just a working out of that one. All right, what about the last, the, uh, the moment due to force two? That one turned out to be negative in all the directions. This one's going to be negative about the x positive about the y, positive about the z, just looking at it. Okay, what about the position vector for the second force? That, that, you, you anticipate the same thing? You can observe if you'd like. That's what they're doing. Well, they paid 20 bucks. But you can come in for free. They're just watching. Rachel, you can do that if you want. Actually, I kidnapped them first. <laughs> tried to smooth over it. Uh, position vector for this force. You can use either that point or that point. Either one's known as well as the other, so maybe uh, minus 200 in the x, or 0.2 meters, because that's in millimeters up there, and nothing in the y, and what in the z? Minus 600, .6. Minus, minus 600 mi millimeters, or minus, and that's, uh, uh, that's the k, minus 0.6. And that's meters, and then the force we've got, and that's uh, minus 325 minus 731. And then it has no K component, and that's the units. That look right for just setting up the cross product? Minus 0.2, minus 0.6. Minus three, minus seven. Okay, yeah, that looks right. Okay. How are we done? I think we're done. Eleven oh five. Yeah. Okay. We're we're finished here, so we'll uh, we'll finish this one then on Monday. No, not much is left. Uh, you've got the moments um, of the first force and the applied moment. So all you need to do is calculate that second moment in the narrow.